Well, hey, Bayshore family, how are you? How are you? How are you? Happy 2021. And I'm so glad you're with us. And listen, if you were with us last weekend and you're with us today, you have perfect church attendance for the entire year. That is worth celebrating right there. You know, give, give yourself a high five in your living room right now. Call your mother, do something. You've been in church all year. And so that's amazing. I'm so glad you're with us. Um, if we've never met before, my name is Joel and I am uh, on the team at a Rehoboth location. And, and by the way, Rehoboth people, what's up? I miss you all. And I will see you all in the basement next week. And make sure you register at five o'clock on Wednesday to come to church in person next weekend. But just kind of thinking about Rehoboth, uh, one of the things that we did before COVID in Rehoboth is we always had like this moment in our service where we would like, you know, like fist bump each other and high five or like, you know, give each other hugs, which by the way, do you remember when we used to be able to hug people? I, th I think if you give somebody a hug right now, like I, I, I think you go to jail. I'm not, I'm not sure what happens, but I know it's not good if you give somebody a hug. But since like Hugs are so 2019, but we're all together virtually online right now. I need everybody to get out your phone. Some of you are watching this on your phone. And I, did, I need you to just like type hi in the comments. Or, or you can like bust out your favorite emoji. We're going to make the comment section like the lobby in, the, in church. So just like put your favorite emoji, a high five emoji, a fist bump emoji. Maybe type into the comments, go Ravens. All right, I will accept that comment right there. But I want you to get out of your phones and do that right now. I am calling you out. I will wait for you to do this. I'm calling you out, okay? Uh, Aaron Steele from Millsboro, the Millsboro campus. I know you got something to write in there. Dylan and Brenda Bratton from Rehoboth, put something in there. Joshua Kenny, Josh, I know you got something to say. Put it in the comments. Everybody dig deep in your emoji library. Put something in there because you know church is going to be good <laughs> when the pastor tells you to get on your phones right out of the gate. And while you're all like interacting and chatting in the comment section, let me just say this real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be kind of quick today. I'm going to try to be quick because, well, because the Ravens are playing at one o'clock. Come on, people. And uh, listen, if you are rooting for the Ravens today, well done, my good and faithful servant. If you are not rooting for the Ravens, you're rooting for one of those heathen teams. Listen, it's a good thing you're in church because, well, you need to be in church. All right. So. Anyway, let, let's get started, and I'm kind of curious, just thinking about Christmas. Christmas just happened for all of us. I want you to think about what's the best Christmas gift you've ever gotten, all right? And, and there, there is no wrong answer. What is the best Christmas gift you've ever gotten? Now, there, there could be a wrong answer if the gift that you're thinking about is not the gift that the person you're sitting next to on the couch gave you, okay? That would make Christmas not a very Merry Christmas. But what's the best Christmas gift you've ever gotten? And while you're thinking about that, I thought about that this week, and my favorite Christmas gift ever happened last Christmas. And uh, what happened is we went over to my mother-in-law's for Christmas Day lunch, and we walked in. All Christmas decorations were up. It smelled like Christmas. You know that Christmas smell. But my, my, my mother-in-law was also making our Christmas lunch, which was chicken parmesan, praise the Lord. And so it smelled like a pine tree had walked into the Olive Garden, which was amazing. And so we ate Christmas lunch. It's so good. And then we, we sat around and we started opening up gifts and there was like a Christmas movie on the TV. We're just having this amazing time. And the last gift my in-laws gave us was a letter. And so we, we opened up this letter and we started to read it. And the last line in the letter said, your big present from us is we're taking you all to Disney World. And I'm like, wait, 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 let, let, let's read that line again. And they're like, we're taking you guys to Disney World. I'm like, woo. And then they said five magical words. They said, and we're paying for it. And let me just tell you, my spiritual gift is cheap. And so I was having a Pentecostal moment in their living room. They're, we're, we're going to Disney, they're paying for it. And then they said this, if, if it wasn't already good enough, they said, and we're all flying first class. I'm like, whoo! I'm like pushing my wife over, pushing the Christmas tree over. Stacy's giving me piggyback rides around the living room. Like I, I grew up in Gumboro. I have never flown first class in my life. Like, I don't even know what happens in first class, okay? In my mind, in first class, they give you foot rubs. You know, they probably give you virtual reality goggles. I'm pretty sure there's a Cinnabon up there. I can't prove it, but I think there's a Cinnabon in first class. And so, like, I am so excited that we are going on an all-expense-paid trip to Disney, flying first class. Now, 
The last time I went to Disney, I was like five years old and we did not fly for first class. We rode down to Disney in the family station wagon that was about 72 feet long. It looked like the Clark Griswold mobile. And I sat in the third row seat, the one that faced back some of you 80s kids, you know what I'm talking about, that looked at the car behind you the whole way. I rode in that third row seat the whole way to Disney, me and my brother. And we did things to the cars that were following us that I still can't talk about today, okay? The Lord will forgive me. But that's how I went to Disney last. And so when they said, we're going to Disney, we're flying first class, it's all paid for. I'm like, 2020 is going to be the best year ever, you guys. Okay, I was thinking about singing the blessing in their living room. Like, it was just so good. And so all this happened. I was so pumped for 2020. We were going to go on Father's Day. That's when we were leaving to go to Disney. And then March 2020 showed up and COVID hit and Mickey Mouse shut Disney down. Look, you know things are bad when Mickey Mouse won't even take your in-laws money and let you in his house. <laughs> and so here's my point. I, I had all these expectations for an amazing 2020 and then reality hit. And so did my hopes, my dreams and my first class foot rubs. They all went down the drain, right? And, and we're supposed to go um, in May. Uh, down to Disney. We rescheduled it. I'm not like uh, holding my hopes up too much on that. But I bet you, you have a similar story like that from 2020, like where things did not go the way you expected them to go. And here's what I'm learning. I'm learning when our reality is different than our expectations, we lose hope. We lose joy. We lose our trip to Disney, right? And I think that we can all agree that our 2020 expectations and our 2020 reality looks a whole lot like a Disney trip looked. And so like maybe for you, uh, you think about 2020, think about all the things that happened, all right? If you, you, you walk through this together, we all walk through this together. The pandemic happened in 2020. Face masks became the, the fashion uh, that you could not live without. Like you had to have a face mask to get through 2020. In 2020, Tom Brady started playing for the Buccaneers. Listen, before the, Tom Brady was on the Buccaneers, I didn't even know that was a football team in the NFL, okay? Like that happened in 2020. In 2020, murder hornets showed up. In 2020, a lot of us became our kids' homeschool teachers. Lord help this next generation, all right? But here's my point. Our expectations were different than our reality. And some of us lost hope. Some of us lost our joy. And so maybe, maybe, you don't got a lot of hope going into this year because of what happened last year. Maybe you're not where you expected to be in life right now. And so for the next 15 minutes, I just want to sweeten your outlook when things don't go the way that you expect. I, I want to sweeten your outlook when Mickey cancels your Disney trip, people. And, and I, I want to do this because I think we should all have hope about this year. And so I'm calling this message today, Lemons and sugar, all right? And we all want a little sugar, okay? So lemons and sugar. And to start this whole thing out, uh, we're gonna look in the book of um, Luke. And let, let me just set this story up, all right? The Christmas story had just happened in the Bible. And so Jesus had just been born. He's eight days old. And his parents, Mary and Joseph, take Jesus to the temple, to the church of the day. And they're taking him there to get circumcised, which, by the way, um, <laughs> Uh, that is not a service that we offer at Bayshore, all right? I can see somebody like pulling out their connect card right now. Like, okay, let me, let me stop. No, 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 no. Okay, listen, this was the temple back in the day. And so Mary and Joseph show up to the temple to have Jesus circumcised. And there's a guy named Simeon there. And that's where we pick up. We'll throw it on the screen so you can follow along. It's Luke chapter two, starting at verse 25. And it says this, at that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was, he was righteous and devout and was eagerly, eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. Let's go back to where you the verse. Yeah. Okay. All good. You want to look through the other ones to see if it does that? It gives me time to contemplate whether I want to make that circumcision comment again or not. I think I do. It 
Eight days later. In the temple. It's all right. I'm glad you stopped me. I was going to roll with it, but I'm, I knew it would be a disaster on the screen. Okay, just whenever. Yeah, you can keep it here. Okay, three, two, one. And so I'm calling this message Lemons and Sugar. And to start, we're going to look in Luke. And let me just kind of set up what's going on in Luke before we read it. Uh, The Christmas story had just happened, which means that Jesus had just been born. It's been eight days since he's been born. And so his parents, Mary and Joseph, they they load him up. They're taking him to the temple to get circumcised at the temple. Side note, okay. Uh, Just so you know, like, that's not a service that we offer (laughs) At our church, all right? I can see somebody, like, pulling out their connect card right now. Like, oh, we got, we got to sign up for that, honey. Okay, no, 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 no. Okay. No, this was in Bible times. They're taking Jesus to the temple, to the church of the day. And, and they walk in, and there's this guy named Simeon there. And that's where we pick up the story. And you can follow along on the screen. Luke chapter 2, verse 25. It says, at that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly, all right, don't miss this part. He was eagerly waiting For the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. In other words, my man had some expectations. Just like me going on the perfect Disney trip, Simon had, or Simeon had this, um, these expectations for this Savior that was going to come rescue Israel. And so the Holy Spirit was upon him, Simeon, and it revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him, Simeon, to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. Now, now let, me, let me break this down for you real quick. All right, Simeon, he, he's like sitting in the temple. He is waiting to meet this Savior because the Holy Spirit had said to him, hey, hey, before you die, Simeon, you are going to meet this Savior. Now, well, let me just tell you what every Jew was expecting in this Savior. Every Jew was expecting like a powerful politician. Every Jew was expecting this like war hero or somebody who was rich. They were looking for a savior, not from their sins, but a savior from Rome. And so there were high expectations for this savior. Simeon is like in the temple looking around like, okay, this savior is gonna come. And the Holy Spirit promised I would see him. And then from the back door of the church busts in Joseph, Mary, and BJ, baby Jesus. And they are not some rich, powerful politicians. They are not rich. They are hicks. And so nobody expected that. But Simeon wasn't even faced. Simeon did not lose hope, okay? In fact, in the next verse, we see that Simeon had joy. Like, he is singing. He, he's like doing the dab. All right, I think Simeon was doing the get up, you know? Two-step in cowboy boogie. Okay, I can't prove it, but I think he was doing that in the temple. Because Simeon, he had loose He had a loose grip on his expectations and a tight grip on God's promises. And I think what we can all learn from Simeon is that when we have a loose grip on our expectations and a tight grip on God's promises, we can have hope no matter what our situation is. And so maybe you're watching right now and you don't have hope about 2021. Maybe you're not where you expect it to be. Maybe you are not doing the get up in your living room right now. And so what do you do? If that's where you're at, I got two things for you today. The first one, and we'll put it on the screen, is this. You have to loosen your expectations. Loosen your expectations if you want to gain joy in 2021. Now, I've noticed something. I've noticed that there are two types of people. Just just two. That's it. You, You are one of these two people, even though you don't know what these two things are right now, okay? There are two types of people in this world. There are people like me who make lists for everything. And there's, then there's the rest of you all. And you don't make lists for anything. And you stress the rest of us list makers out. And, and if you're a list maker like me, you, you make lists for everything. You make grocery lists. You make Christmas 
lists. You make mental lists. You probably got a list of your favorite children listed out in order. Like you got lists for everything. All right. And if you're a list person like me, just, just put it in the comments. Just confess it. May, it may be therapeutic for all of us. Just put that you're a list. You can, you can share your Amazon wish list in the comments right now if you want. We'll allow that. But if you're a list person like me, I, I get you. So there's list people. And then there's my wife. All right, my wife, she doesn't make lists for anything. When she goes to the grocery store, no list required, okay? She doesn't w- wait on a list for what to buy, okay? She just buys what she feels. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, it doesn't matter if we have 128 pack of toilet paper in the house. If she walks by that TP aisle and she feels it calling her, she will buy a 48 pack of toilet paper and just load our house up. That's how she rolls, man, with, with whatever she feels. And we've been together for 17 years, me and my wife. She's never made a list, okay? She's never even made a New Year's resolution list. Some of you, you know who you are. That's you right there. You're like, listen, my only resolution is to not make a New Year's resolution list. And so like, maybe that's who you are. You don't make New Year's resolution lists, but I'm not that person. I've been making a New Year's resolution list since I was like seven. I think I got them cataloged and color coordinated by year, okay? Like I got my whole life planned out. And so I was thinking about New Year's resolutions because like we're all kind of like failing them right now because we're in like day 10 of the year. Um, and so I looked some, some New Year's resolutions up on the internet this week and, and I got some good ones for you. Here's this first one. I'll show you. This is from a kid and her name is Annie. She's five. Annie's New Year's resolution is I am going to help doggies like if they are stuck on cliffs. <laughs> Listen, how many doggies you got to see stuck on cliffs for that to make it into your New Year's resolution? Like, I love this. I don't know where Annie lives, but there's a lot of cliffs apparently. Here's a New Year's resolution meme. I, I like this one because I can identify with this. Every year, dear New Year's resolution, well, it was fun while it lasted. Sincerely, January 2nd. <laughs> Come on. That's like my life motto right there. This, this just sums it up. Um, this makes some of us feel better. All right, let's, let's go to my favorite one, this last one. Christy on Twitter says... Just burnt 2,000 calories. Good, good. That's the last time I leave brownies in the oven while I nap. Come on, hashtag New Year's resolution. <laughs> Nothing is more lonely than telling jokes in an empty room, all right? But that, that is funny. This is funny right here. <laughs> but I think the reason we tell uh, or we have lists, okay, some of us are list people, but regardless of that, I think we all, we all have plans, don't we? And maybe you have some plans for this year. Maybe your plan for this year is to get in shape, to get swole. Come on. Maybe it's to get a date. Maybe your plan is to get swole so you can get a date. Okay, I don't know. Um, maybe your plan is to make a list this year. Maybe your plan this year you're, you're on your list is for your kids. And you're, you're, your plan is for your kids to move out of your house. Okay, I don't know what you're planning this year. But if 2020 taught us anything, whatever your plans are, whatever your hopes are, You can plan on 2021 not going as planned. You can plan on that. In fact, if you're a list person like me, just take your list. And at the top of your list, I want you to write this. Subject to change. Come on, just just say that in your living room right now. Subject to change. Type it in the chat. Subject to change. Because I think we're all discovering that life and our plans are all subject to change. To change. A few examples from last year. Uh, last year was the first year that both of my kids were supposed to be out of daycare in actual school. Free school, come on, for free school. And so, listen, I was pretty excited about September coming up when both of my kids would be in school because it would be the first time in seven years that we weren't going to have a daycare bill. Listen, I could probably have built Disney World in my backyard for what we paid in daycare bills the last seven years. And so like I was counting down the days till they were going to the free school. And so September rolled around. I'm like already theming out the theme parks that's going to go in our backyard because we're not going to have a daycare bill anymore. And then schools were shut down and my kids are still in daycare and we're still paying the bill. Listen, subject to change, right? This Christmas, just like two and a half, three weeks ago, listen, my entire family had COVID. Like I'm talking me, my wife, both of my kids, okay, we were, we were four for four, guys. We are overachievers in our house. And so it gave a whole new meaning to home alone because life is all about subject to change. But one of the things that I'm learning is that we can have hope, we can have joy, no matter how much our, our life changes when we loosen our expectations. 
when we loosen our expectations of what we have planned for in life. And, and let me just tell you what you can expect in 2021. You have a heavenly father who loves you. In 2021, you have a heavenly father that has a plan even when things don't go according to your plan. All right, we, have a, we, ha, we don't have to have a perfect year when we already have a perfect heavenly father. And a lot of us have already planned out our perfect year on a piece of paper, but you don't have to have a perfect year planned out when you have a perfect heavenly father who loves you and already has a plan for 2021 for you. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in planning out our perfect year that we lose sight of having joy all throughout the year. I think sometimes we get so caught up in planning out our perfect life that we lose sight of what God is teaching us in our life when things don't go perfectly. And so I, I want to show you something. This is in Matthew 6, 24, I'm sorry, 34, from Jesus. And this is for my planners, all right? I'm talking to myself here. Jesus says this, give your entire attention, entire attention to what God is doing right. Okay, everybody say this on your couch, right now. Come on, somebody needs to hear this today because we're all looking to the future. I, and listen, I know some of you got stuff going on this week. You, you got deadlines at work this week. Some of you, you, you got your kids' virtual karate class lined up on YouTube on Wednesday nights. I, I know some of you, like, you, you got it all lined up, what you're going to do later on, you know, um, and on Friday and Saturday. We got all this stuff that we're thinking about in the future. But Jesus says, give your entire attention to what, is do, what God is doing right now now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. Come on, somebody. And then Jesus says, this is so good. Somebody needs to hear this today. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. Listen, when you loosen your expectations and you have this in mind, you can have more joy this year, you can have more rest this year. You can have more of what matters this year. And God will help you deal with whatever hard things come your way. And so when life doesn't go the way that you expect, when you're all freaking out because you're a list person like me and I just told you to write the top of the list subject to change, I just want you to loosen your expectations. And that's how you can gain joy this year. Um, my second and last point is this. For point one, one is loosen your grip on your expectations. The second point is this. Tighten your grip on God's promises. If you want to have more joy this year, tighten your grip on God's promises. So question, have you ever had like something on your body fall asleep? Like, like maybe you're like in a, in a work meeting and you sit down and you cross your legs and you sit there. And then when you go to uncross your legs and get up out of the meeting after an hour, your one leg is asleep and you have to like, you know, do the stanky leg out of the work meetings. You, you ever have like something go to sleep? Isn't that the worst? And sometimes what happens to me is like my arms will go to sleep when I'm sleeping. So like, I, I guess what happens a lot of times when I sleep is I, I put my arms like up underneath my pillow which cuts off my circulation. And I will wake up and both arms are doing like the, the limp fish thing, the limp noodle thing. And so a few months ago, I woke up because my alarm was going off and my wife, it was her day off and my alarm is going off. And so I knew I needed to turn off the alarm right away or things were gonna get grinchy in my house. And so like I go to turn off my alarm, but when I go to get up, my arms are completely asleep and they're doing like the, the fish limp noodle thing like this. And I'm like, oh, great. I got to get this alarm off. And so I go to pick up my phone. And because my arms are asleep, I cannot get a grip on my phone. I cannot pick it up. And so like, I'm trying to pick it up. I can't do it. And Stacy is starting to move in the bed. And I'm like, oh, great. I, I, I got to do something. And so it's, my phone is sitting on my nightstand. And I try to like limp noodle my arm to drop it on the snooze button. And I'm just like, randomly dropping it on the snooze button. Like, I'm gonna hit this snooze button eventually. It's gonna happen. And I'm dropping it and it is, I am not hitting the button. And so I got so desperate, true story. I used my nose to hit the snooze button. Come on, somebody in watching this has done that. I hope so. Somebody admit it in the comments. I'll feel better about myself. But I, I had to hit, use my nose to turn snooze on on my phone. And then I just like got up and like limp noodle arm walked into the closet and that's how my day started. But I tell you that, I tell you that because when the circulation gets cut off to something, it falls asleep and we lose control over it. 
And I think sometimes, sometimes if we don't stay connected to God's promises and we don't loosen our grip on our expectations, we can cut off our spiritual circulation in our hearts and in our lives. And then we're, we're kind of going through life without, you know, uh, when we're going through life and when something happens, we can't get a grip on anything. But when that spiritual circulation is pumping in our life, guys, I'm telling you, you can have joy in the middle of a pandemic. And, and let me just say this. There is a vaccine for panic when things don't go the way that you expect. And that vaccine is called remembering God's promises. And remembering God's promises has a side effect and its side effect is joy. There is something huge about God's promises. And so let me, let me show you. We're going to go back to the story with Simeon in the temple. Remember, Simeon, he's just, he's just sitting there waiting. He's waiting on this like savior to come and rescue Israel. And then through the back doors of the church shows like Joseph and he's rocking a baby Bajorn and he's got baby Jesus in there. But Simeon isn't phased. This is what happens when Simeon sees baby Jesus. We're in verse 28. It says that Simeon was there in the temple and he took the child in his arms. Pause. <laughs> I just want to say it's probably not a good idea to go to a new parent with an eight-year, eight-day-old baby and just take the baby from them. I know some good base your moms that will church chop you if you go and grab their kid, okay? So I'm just putting that out there. But Simeon was so pumped, he grabbed baby Jesus and he praised God even though this wasn't what he expected, he praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. That's the big word, promised. And so I want to just like get your heart, give your heart some spiritual circulation. And this is important. God always, always, always keeps his promises. Simeon is like, I, I, I believed it in my heart and then I saw it and now I can die which is how some of us are going to feel if the Buccaneers get into the Super Bowl this year. We're recording this a little early, so they played yesterday, so I'm guessing they beat the Washington football team, but Lord, I hope they didn't. Anyway, but Simeon, he kept his joy. Simeon kept that life circulating or that, that um, spiritual circulation going because he kept a tight grip on God's promises. And we got to remember God's promises if we want to keep a tight grip as we go through different things in life. And so maybe you're here and, and you feel like your spiritual circulation has been cut off a little bit. And maybe you don't have a whole lot of hope right now. And so I just want to end by giving you some hope and just share with you some of the promises of God. And so to do that, I have some, uh, some lemons up here, some lemonade up here. Um, and first, here's, here's a lemon. Now, if I were to take a bite of this lemon, which I'm not going to do, but if I were to take a bite of this, I, I would have this face. Like, I, I, I don't do bitter. I'm not one of those people who like, like the bitter candy, the sour. I don't, I don't do bitter, all right? But, but I think life is like these lemons sometimes, okay? Like, like when, the, when the Ravens lost twice to the Steelers this season, okay, I was like, really? Had that lemon face, you know? Maybe you're walking through the grocery store and you, like, run into your ex and you're like, Really? Maybe your gym is closed because of COVID and you're like, oh, really? Maybe your gym is open during COVID and you're still like, oh, really? Like we have all these different things that kind of are bitter in our life. Now, now we all know the phrase, all right? When life gives you lemons, what do we do? We make lemonade, right? In other words, we, we make something better out of something bitter, all right, and so like I have some, uh, some cut lemons here and, and I think life is like these lemons sometimes, all right? And so like, you know, maybe you're going through life and, and like you're thinking, man, I'm not too excited about 2021 because man, 2020 was so bad that I, I just think 2021 is gonna be even worse. And so you're squeezing some bitter in there. Um, maybe for you, it's like, you're thinking, man, I got to continue to homeschool my kids and it's just not working out too good for me. It's definitely not working out too good for my kids. And it just is feeling like a little bit of bitter and you're putting that in there. You're squeezing the lemon in there. Maybe it's something different, all right? Maybe you've lost your job or maybe like you, you can't find your dream job or you can't find your dream person and life just kind of feels bitter because you're lonely or you feel stuck and you got all these lemons that you're squeezing into your life right now or that are being squeezed into your life right now. But, but let me just encourage you with this. You can't make lemonade with only lemons, right? In order to make lemonade, you also got to have 
sugar. And I love some sugar. And I want you to imagine that this sugar represents God's promises. All right, and, and, and when you have some lemonade in your life, the way you sweeten up your life is you got to pour some sugar in there. And so here's what I mean by remembering God's promises. Maybe you're feeling lonely right now, but you say God promised that he would never leave me or forsake me. And you just, you pour some sugar in that lemonade. Or, or maybe things aren't good in your life, but you just remember, hey, God said that he loves to bless his people. And you just hold on to that. You pour some sugar into your life with that. Or maybe things are going sideways in your family right now. But you remember that if, we, if I keep a tight grip on God, God is going to keep a tight grip on me. And you just keep on pouring in God's promises. You got some bitter, but you keep pouring in God's promises. You keep pouring in God's promises. I like a lot of sugar, okay? So let's just go for this right here. Okay, you keep pouring in God's promises, and you make life a little sweeter than it is right now. And let me just tell you, you can't make lemonade without a few lemons in your life. And how, how many of you know you got some lemons in your life? This would not be the moment to like turn and look at the person you're sitting next to you on the couch. Like, hey, you're, you're my lemon. <laughs> look, the thing, you're not going to have any sugar in your house if you do that. Anyway, we all have some lemons in our life. But when we pour God's promises in, that makes the bitter a little bit better. But in order to pour God's promises in, you got to remember God's promise and keep pouring that sugar in. Let, let, let me end by reading you this verse. Hebrews 6.18 says this. This is so good. It says, so God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because this is, this is worth what you paid to come to church today because it is impossible for God to lie. Come on, that is good right there. It is impossible for God to lie. So how I want to end is I just want to read you a few things that the Bible promises you. And I want you to remember that it is impossible for God to lie. And so if you headed in to 2021 with some bitter in your life, with some lemons in your life, I just want you to maybe make this, make your life a little bit sweeter. And so listen to this. This is so good. Galatians says, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law, so he could adopt us as his very own children, and it is impossible for God to lie. Galatians says, I'm sorry, Jeremiah says, for God knows the plans he has for you. They are plans for good and not for harm, plans to give you a future and a hope, and it is impossible for God to lie. Romans says, God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. And church, it is impossible for God to lie. Romans also says, nothing can separate you from God's love. Nothing, people, nothing can ever separate you from the love of God. And it is impossible for God to lie. John says, if I confess my sins, God is faithful and just to forgive and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And it is impossible for God to lie. Jesus says, keep asking and you will receive. Keep on seeking and you'll find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. And it is impossible for God to lie. First Corinthians says, God is faithful and he won't allow you to be tempted more than you can stand. And when you are tempted, he will show you a way out and it is impossible for God to lie. Last one, Philippians says, he who began a good work in me will see it through to completion. He will fulfill it in Christ Jesus and it is impossible for God to lie. Listen, when you're walking through the royal farms and your glasses are so fogged up because you got a face mask on and you're like walking into the Krispy Kreme display because you can't see, you just say, listen, I am walking by faith and not by sight and it is impossible for God to lie. Listen, when life gets bitter, maybe you're feeling bitter about 2021, when you're doing like your work Zoom meeting and at the same time you're like you're trying to homeschool your kids, maybe you're feeling a little bitter while you're explaining to your kids why Mickey shut down Disney. You just remember God's promises and you pour that sugar in. When, when your family member who pulled up to your house before Christmas and parked the RV in the driveway and said, hey, we're just going to be here for a few days, and they're still in your driveway right now, okay, you just remind yourself, hey, God is working all things out for the good of those who love him, and you just pour God's promises in. And what are you doing? What are you doing? You are loosening your expectations, and you're keeping a tight grip on God's promises, and that's how you'll make 2021 a whole lot sweeter. Well, let me pray for you guys. Jesus, I'm so thankful that we can start a fresh year. 
As some of us, maybe we started this year not feeling so fresh, not, not feeling so lively and hopeful for the future. But God, I just pray that we will hold on to your promises. We all have expectations and a lot of those expectations haven't been met. But God, one thing that we can always expect is that you are gonna keep your promises and it is impossible for you to lie and you have our back and you are our heavenly father. And so God, I pray that those promises will sweeten up the bitter in our life as we walk through 2021. And I am so hopeful for the future not because of the circumstances, not because of anything materialistic around me, but because I have a father, a heavenly father who is with me and so does everybody who's watching this. So help us to just rely on that uh, this new year. And we love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.